It's an exciting week of Gamecock baseball with a Tuesday night matchup and another SEC home series. This is Capital City Sports. Coming to you from the Kennedy Greenhouse studio off the horseshoe is another episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Katie Anger. Coming back from Nashville after losing the series to Vanderbilt, Gamecock Baseball was looking to get the win Tuesday night before heading into a weekend SEC series against Tennessee. Nick Proto was at Founders Park where he had the coverage for us. It's a brisk April evening here at Founders Park as the Gamecocks of South Carolina host the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. Coastal comes into this one red hot, winning their last seven games and nine of their last ten, as South Carolina has dropped three of their last four, including two tough road losses to Vanderbilt. South Carolina is looking to pick up a win here as they move into a big series against Tennessee this weekend. Let's check out the highlights. Coastal Carolina, top of the first, Anthony Marks getting things started with a double to left center field off of pitcher Taylor Widener. Widener would settle down here as he strikes out Zach Remillard to end the inning. We head to the bottom of the first. After a Gene Cohn flyout, it is LT Tolbert getting things started for the Gamecocks. Picking up a single to center field. That is the first hit of the game for South Carolina. 27th hit of the season for Tolbert. After a John Jones walk, it is Dom Thompson Williams doing a beast for the Gamecocks all season long. Does it again with a double to right center field. That's going to score Tolbert. Jones is going to head to third, and the Gamecocks take the 1 0 lead on Thompson Williams, 27th RBI of the season. They were not done there. Next batter, Jonah Bride, off the glove of pitcher Zach Hoppick. They are going to get Bride out at first, but John Jones will come in to score to give the Gamecocks a 2 0 lead. Top of the second, Widener dealing. Strikes out Connor Owings here. A couple batters later, Billy Cook, 91 miles an hour for Widener. Let's skip ahead to the fourth. A Jonah Bride walk puts him in first base. Next batter, D.C. Arendis, he gets a single. That's going to do it for Hoppick. He goes three and a third, striking out two and giving up the two runs. Next batter is T.J. Hopkins, hits the ball deep to right field. That's going to be enough to score Bride. Hopkins picks up his 11th RBI on the season, and it's a three to nothing lead for the Gamecocks as we head to the top of the fifth now. Shanta clears, threatening, as you see Connor Owings there. He gets a bloop single to left. After two ground outs, gets him to third base. A uh, error by Marcus Mooney is going to score Owings, and Shanta Clears are on the board as the score is now three to one. Next batter, you see Coastal Carolina steals a base there, puts somebody in scoring position, eliminates the double play possibility. But you see a ground out here from Seth Lancaster advances the runner to third, and then another ground out is going to end the inning and the trouble for the Gamecocks. As we head to the sixth inning now, Shanta Clears threatening again. Taylor Widener. Walks Anthony Marks here, and that's going to do it for Widener. Reed Scott coming in for the Gamecocks. And his first batter he faces gets a little bit of help from the defense. It is Jonah Bride at third base, flashing the leather. Great play over there at third base. LT Tolbert, he's loving it. Next batter, though, G.K. Young is going to get a single off of Scott. That's going to advance a runner to third for Coastal Carolina. Now they've got runners on the corners. Next batter, Owings again. He gets a single, squeezes that one past Mooney. That's going to score the runner. Marks, 22nd RBI in the year for Owings, and the lead is now just one. A fly out to right field is going to end the inning in the threat. The Gamecocks holding on to that one-run lead. We head to the top of the seventh now. Coastal Carolina, Billy Cook, he gets a single into the outfield. That's going to uh, start the inning off for Coastal Carolina. A walk and a ground out advance, him to third, and Michael Piaz has a chance to score him but he's not able to do it. A fly out to first base ends another threat from Coastal Carolina. As we head to the bottom of the seventh, Marcus Mooney starts things off with a single for South Carolina, his first and only hit of the game. Next pit batter, some is good, more is better. Coke, he follows in Mooney's footsteps, gets another single, advances Mooney to second. A couple batters later, wild pitch. We're going to have a play at the plate. Mooney's coming home, and he is safe. 4-2 to lead now for the Gamecocks. Let's head to the eighth inning. Josh Reagan comes in for the six-out save. This was the biggest threat he got all game. The fly out to center field. Ninth inning, no competition. You see him striking out pinch hitter Dalton Ewing there. That's going to end the game. The Gamecocks hang on for the win. 4-2 to over 20th ranked Coastal Carolina. 
The Gamecocks smothered Coastal Carolina's comeback attempt with great pitching in the later innings as they picked up the win 4-2. to two. They'll look to pick up a few more as they head into their tough series coming up at the end of the month against Florida. Right now, though, they're focused on Tennessee this weekend. For Capital City Sports, I'm Nick Proto. After getting the win against Coastal Carolina on Tuesday night, Gamecock baseball goes into the weekend against Tennessee with high morale. Although 7-2 in conference play and ranked second in the SEC East, the Gamecocks know how quickly that can change, especially with Tennessee coming off a losing series against Kentucky, looking to regain momentum. Friday night was the start of the series with Claudia Chikamian had the coverage for us. South Carolina returned to Founders Park Friday night to face Tennessee for their first home series in two weeks. The Gamecocks are looking to rebound after dropping the series last weekend in Vanderbilt. Clark Schmidt went to the mound hoping to rebound after suffering his first loss of the season last week. The game was quiet until the third inning when the Gamecocks capitalized on volunteer errors. Gene Cohn and Jonah Bride reached on back-to-back -back fielder's choice, putting them at the corners for John Jones. Jones also reached on a fielder's choice as Cohn was able to score. Gamecocks take a 1-0 lead in the third. They didn't have the lead for long, though. Tyler Schultz singled and stole second, then advanced to third on a throwing error by Cullen. Derek Lance singled, driving in Schultz, and tied the game at 1. Madison Stokes got his only hit of the day with a leadoff single to short to start the fourth. LT Tolbert comes in clutch, hitting a no doubt two run homer over the right field wall. This is Tolbert's second home run of the season and gives the Gamecocks the lead again. Three to one after four. Tennessee kept things close though. Nick Senzel and Vincent Jackson hit back-to-back -back singles to start the fifth. Jordan Rogers came through with a double to right center to plate Senzel. The Vols get one back, but the Gamecocks are able to hang on to their lead. Yeah. South Carolina was looking to extend that lead though in the fifth. Brian Jones hit consecutive singles, then Chris Cullen was intentionally walked to load the bases with no outs. Tolbert drew a walk to bring in Bride, then TJ Hopkins hit a ground rule double, scoring Jones and Cullen. This gives Gamecocks the insurance they wanted with a 6-2 lead. They extended that lead in the sixth with a single from Dom Thompson-Williams, 7-2 after six. Brandon Murray entered for relief but struggled. He started the seventh hitting a batter, then walking Jackson. Roger singled to score one, and that was all for Murray. Tyler Johnson came in looking to do better but also couldn't get much done. Lance singled to left to drive in two. Santiago followed with a single and plated one, cutting Gamecocks lead down to 7-6. Josh Reagan entered in the eighth looking to close things out. He had some difficulty and loaded the bases, but a ground out to Cullen ended the inning and kept the Gamecocks lead. Tennessee opened the ninth with a walk, but that's all they could do. Jackson flied out to left to end the game and South Carolina wins the nail biter 7-6. Schmidt had his work cut out for him against the Vols, giving up nine hits, but he struck out ten in the win. The usually dominant bullpen struggled, destroying the Gamecocks' early lead. Brandon Murray, Tyler Johnson, and Josh Reagan gave up four runs on five hits over three innings of work. South Carolina hopes for a stronger outing on Saturday as they try and get the series win. For Capital City Sports, I'm Claudia Chikamian. Then it was on to Saturday afternoon's baseball game where Nick Baronesi was at the stadium for us. After defeating Tennessee 7-6 on Friday night, the South Carolina baseball team came back to play the second game of the series with the Volunteers. Let's take a look at the highlights. Tennessee took the lead immediately when Vincent Jackson looped an RBI single to right field, but he dropped a Gene Cone fly ball in the bottom of the inning to set up a huge rally. Jonah Bride knotted up the game with an RBI single in which Cone barely avoided the tag at the plate. Then, Chris Cullen laced a two-run double down the right field line to score both Dom Thompson-Williams and Bride. TJ Hopkins would single Cullen home to cap off the rally. But Tennessee wasted no time closing the gap, using the bottom of their order to produce their runs. Max Bartlett and Derek Lance each had RBI singles in the second inning, and Jackson earned his second RBI single of the game tie the game up at four in the fifth inning. Despite giving up four earned runs, Braden Webb settled down. He gave up just two hits after the third inning, and he struck out 10 hitters in seven and a third innings of work to preserve his seventh victory of the season. He has not lost since March 5th, 
when South Carolina lost to Clemson in Greenville, South Carolina. The Gamecocks regained their early momentum in the sixth inning, mostly due to Marcus Mooney. He chopped an RBI infield single to the shortstop to give South Carolina the lead. In a stunning turn of events, Mooney was then picked off at first base, but he stayed in a rundown long enough for Hopkins to steal home. With the help of defensive prowess from first baseman L.T. Tolbert, the Gamecocks went on to shut the Tennessee offense down, and they won by the final score of 7-4. Marcus Mooney had a big game for South Carolina, going 2-4 for four with an RBI. His biggest production came in the sixth inning, when he drove in a run on an infield single to the shortstop, and then got into a rundown between first and second, allowing L.T. Tolbert to score from third. South Carolina went on to win by a final score of 7-4. They will take on Tennessee in the third and final game of the series, looking for the sweep. For Capital City Sports, this is Nick Veronese. The baseball series wrapped up on a beautiful Sunday afternoon at Founders Park, where John Wagner has all the details about the final matchup against the Volunteers. Coming off two wins against Tennessee, the Gamecocks look for the sweep on Sunday. Oh, we had Adam Hill on the bump. We know how he did. Now it's time to show you. Gamecocks warming up for their Sunday game against Tennessee. We're going to move this highlight up to the fourth inning where the Volunteers are already up one to nothing. And Jared Prude's going to put this ball in the infield but not get very far as he's going to ground into a 5-4-3 double play. In the next inning, Nick Senzel, he's going to put the ball in the infield once again. And this one to a diving Jonah Bride who's going to throw out Chris Hall, but Benito Santiago scores to make the game 2 to nothing, And then Marcus Mooney rips one down the left field line, just barely fair. T.J. Hopkins and Madison Stokes will score, and he's saving this one for later. Got to write that one down on the pad, tuck down away for later. Sixth inning, Madison Stokes is going to put this one into play again. Puts one to third base, and he's going to get out, but John Jones comes across the plate, and it's 3-2 to two Gamecocks. And then in the seventh inning, Stephen Kane comes in a pitch for UT, and there's a wild pitch, and Cone gets the elusive double steal, diving headfirst into third base, just in time for LT Tolbert to come up and try to hit him home. He's got this one deep, but no luck there in the seventh. We're going to move on to the eighth inning, where Alex Decino, back from injury after that Vanderbilt game, drives one into left field. Dom Thompson Williams scores. Arendis is on third. 4-3 to three Gamecocks, and that would be the deciding run as Josh Ragen comes on to the ninth and puts away three straight batters with bases loaded. Jordan Rogers here popping out, and that's going to be the ball game. Final score at Founders Park, 4-3 to three Gamecocks. The Gamecocks brought out the brooms today to clinch the sweep. We had, we had great hits from none other than my colleague, Marcus Mooney here, and Alex Destino, who came off of a very nice injury from running into the wall, saving me against Vanderbilt. Josh Reagan also came up with a save. Uh, Tuesday we play UNC in Charlotte at the new uh, Charlotte Knights Baseball Stadium. Maybe next time I'll have a cool-looking microphone to match Braden. Now back to you. To stay updated on all things Gamecock Athletics, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook at CCS on SGTV. Till next week, I'm Katie Anger.